Who would wear this watch? Well, James Bond's worn a watch very like this, the Seamaster 300, which is a more affordable and really beautiful watch. It's the longest running watch placement in any movie ever. Hi, I'm Nick Sullivan from Esquire magazine, and I'm here to talk to you about dive watches. You can find dive watches at just about any price point. Today, we're gonna to look at watches ranging from about $500, topping out at 12,000. But you can go much higher than that if you really have the money. What is a dive watch? Well, back in the 1920s, the first waterproof watches were created for people who needed to go underwater for work, professional divers. Through World War II, that usage became much bigger. Amazing as it is to realize, waterproofing watches is actually really, really hard. And proofing them against pressure, which builds as you go underwater, is even harder. So professional dive watches were built to withstand much more pressure than normal watches. And I think that's partly why dive watches are so popular with, with people now is because they'll put up with whatever you throw at it. You might never dive deeper than like five feet or sit in the bath, but you know that your watch will, will function and it won't break, basically. So the first watch I'm going to talk about today is a Seiko, which is really the best place to start a, a collection, especially if you're looking for dive watches. Seiko have been making them since the 60s, and a lot of their watches really look very similar to the watches they made back then. It's the Professional Association of Diving Instructors which is the sort of biggest worldwide scuba qualification course you can do. I've read yesterday that it was actually named that after um, two guys got together with a bottle of Jack Daniels and decided they would have the name by the end of the, the they finished the bottle. This one starts at around $500, which means that, um, you know, it's a really solid start. And there are plenty of other uh, Seiko dive watches. You could literally just collect Seiko dive watches and you'd probably be happy for years. The second one I'm going to show you is from Longines. It's actually not available yet, coming out in September. And it's a brand new uh, replica, if you like, of a vintage watch from the early 70s, I believe. Nice monoblock case, uh, nice red accents to it. It's also a chronometer. It has been subjected to independent testing and it's a way for, for watches to ensure that their movement has a, a higher degree of uh, reliability and accuracy, which makes this one actually a very good, very good investment. Next up, this is the uh, Aquis from Oris, a company known for its uh, dive watches in particular. Uh, this one's a little glitzier because it's got a polished ceramic uh, insert in the bezel and has a nice shiny blue dial, which obviously with dive watches is a, is a thing. There's an open case back with a, where you can see the automatic movement, the rotor going round. That's always a nice detail. This is water resistant to 300 meters, which is kind of the industry standard for a professional dive watch. You should probably insist on that, even if you only intend on wearing it in the shower. Uh, or, or paddling in the ocean. This is the uh, Tudor FXD Marine Nationale 22, which if you are watch finish aficionados, you know is basically like Rolex's little brother, Benny. Tudor was actually established by the founder of Rolex, Hans Wilsdorf, but they didn't actually start producing these watches until the 1940s. But it was launched last year and it's, it's inspired by the watches made for the French Navy, the Marine Nationale from the 60s that Tudor made under contract. One of the reasons why people love Tudor is that it's actually, you get a really amazing watch for the money. And this is about $3,900, I believe at the moment. But it's really, this is, when you're in this sort of territory with this kind of watch, you're really thinking about a watch that's 2,000 more. Um, so it's, it's a, a great long-term investment. It's a great sports watch. You can take that on holiday and, you know, bash it up. This is my favorite watch of this year, I have to say. This is the Omega Seamaster Professional Planet Ocean Ultra Deep. This one is a big, big watch. It is about 18 millimeters thick, but it actually has been present on the uh, deepest ever dive in the, that, that went into 2019 to find the, the very bottom of the Mariana Trench. But this is actually rated to 20,000 feet. So if you can find anywhere deep enough, good luck. Who would wear this watch? Well, James Bond's worn, it, worn a watch very like this, the Seamaster 300, which is a more affordable and really beautiful watch. It's the longest running watch placement in any movie ever. And there's a reason for that, because it's consistently good. They just last forever and they look great. So all of this talk about dive watches has reminded me that I have in my little collection at home a watch that is absolutely rubbish, but I love it because it has a really great story. This is the Vostok Amphibia. It's a Russian-made dive watch, supposedly worn by professionals, though how many of them survived, I don't know. It does everything wrong. The bezel, this doesn't click, and it also goes in both directions. So this is kind of like a death trap for divers. But it didn't stop the best part of its sort of history, actually. Bill Murray wore it in the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, 
and Owen Wilson wore another Vostok. I mean, it is almost like if Wes Anderson had designed this watch, it would probably look like this, so they just saved their time. It has uh, a ship's wheel, which is kind of cheesy on the dial, and it has an anchor. But it's a really great piece, cost me 70 bucks on eBay. It really doesn't work very well, but I don't care. Who needs a watch now? We can all get everything we need from our phones and, and, and so much more than we can from a watch. The truth is, no one really needs a watch, but then why does everyone want them so badly? I think it's because they all come with stories that is compelling and exciting. And they're also things of beauty. They're also mechanical. They're also analog in the sense that they don't talk to you all the time. They don't ping at you. They just do what they're supposed to do, which is tell the time.